Hi Math 1050, this is section 1.7 talking about linear compound and absolute value inequalities today. Hopefully you remember working with inequalities and interval notation in some of your prior math classes. Um, so just as a, a little brief review, if x is between two numbers, our notation in interval, sorry, in uh, inequality notation looks something like this which on the graph might look like this, where you have that segment between the two numbers. Um, and the other notation that we will use is interval notation. With interval notation, um, we use parentheses and brackets. Um, so the parentheses go with the open circles or the strict inequalities. Brackets go with um, like less than or equal to, so you have the equal part there and a filled in circle. So this one in interval notation would look like from two to six. Um, so this one is the same uh, inequality, but that X can take on those boundary values. So you see the filled in circle on the end. So in interval notation, we would represent that with brackets. And then we've got uh, a couple of or statements. So x less than 2 or x greater than 6. Some of our inequalities will have two parts like this where it's um, sort of the outside instead of the inside. Um, when we write that in interval notation, we have to report it in two parts. We start with negative infinity. And I like to read these just from left to right, from negative infinity to 2. And then we use a union symbol from 6 to infinity. The infinities always use parentheses, never brackets. That's like the worst parenthesis I've ever drawn in my life. It's like a letter C. All right, and then um, this last one is the same as the prior one. It's just showing you that those boundaries might be included. And, you know, you could always have sort of a mix and match situation where you have one of each as well. So this would look almost the same, but with a bracket on the two and the six. So the first um, topic is to write compound inequalities if you're given the graph. So inequalities mean we want to write um, with our greater than or equal to symbols. So if your graph has two parts, then your inequality is gonna have two parts um, separated by the word or because we have a piece here, uh, we have this other piece here, and our value is in one or the other of those. So it's an, it's an or. So for this first piece, we would say, and it does tell us to use x as our variable, so we would say that x is less than or equal to negative 6. And then on the other piece, we would have x is greater than Five. This is an open circle, so that's a strictly greater than. This one's filled in, so it also includes the inequality down there. All right, so this one um, below, uh, when we have just a segment in between two numbers, the easiest way to write it is to go ahead and just sandwich your x between those two numbers. So um, on the right-hand side, we have it Po the possibility that it equals 2, so we do need that here. And then you just put those two numbers on the end like you're reading it from left to right. All right, so now we're going to solve some equations with inequalities. Um, so here are some of the properties of inequalities that allow us to solve the equations. Um, for one thing, uh, we can sort of switch the equation around, but if we reverse the order of those two sides, we do need to also reverse the inequality. Um, you can, if you have an inequality, choose to add a number to both sides of the equations or subtract a number from both sides of the inequality, and that would be fine. Um, if you want to multiply both sides of the equation or divide both sides of the equation, uh, inequality by a positive number, that's also fine. However, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, 
um, that inequality is going to reverse. So we started with, with strictly less than, and when you multiply or divide by a negative number, it will reverse uh, the direction of that inequality. And these statements would also be true if it was um, any of our inequality symbols. So here are the first equations. We're going to try a couple of these. We want to solve for w and simplify our answer as much as possible, and we'll put the answer in uh, inequality form into Alex. So our first equation, we want to start by adding 1 to both sides. We're going to try to isolate that um, w. So now we have 20 is greater than or equal to negative 5w. We can divide by a negative number, that's fine, but when you divide by a negative number, make sure you remember to switch the direction of that inequality. So this gives us negative 4 is less than or equal to w, because um, I reversed the direction of that inequality symbol. So you can type it in like that into Alex, or sometimes people are like more comfortable putting the variable first. And if that's the case, just make sure if you switch the sides that you also um, keep the equality symbol correct. So the W is on the greater side, and so it looks like this if you want that W to come first. Okay, let's solve this one. Um, again, we're going to start by subtract by moving that constant to the other side. So we get negative 18 is less than or equal to negative 6w. And we're going to divide by a negative 6. And because of that division by a negative, we're going to switch the inequality. So we have 3 is greater than or equal to w. Um, or, again, if you're more comfortable with that variable coming first, it would be w is less than 3. Okay, so when you're dealing with compound inequalities um, in equation form like this, um, you'll sometimes see the word and, and you'll sometimes see the word or. Um, what we, are, we have to do is um, solve these. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to also use the graph of them to help you um, figure out what your answer is. Um, so and, uh, in math, the word and implies intersection. We're looking for both conditions to be fulfilled. So we're looking for what you might call the overlap. Um, if you have an or in math, or means union. Um, it means one or the other condition has to be fulfilled. So we're looking for like everything that's covered, like all of it in a union. Um, so we'll look at some we'll look at these two equations and some other ones and talk about how the graph shows us what our answer is. There's kind of uh, six different scenarios that come up. So here's those equations. We're going to work on solving them. So we would add five to both sides of that equation. So we'll work this equation and then we'll work the other one. So we get three v is less than eighteen. We divide by three. Since we're dividing by a positive, there is no need to switch the direction of that inequality. So we get v is less than 6. And for our other equation, we need to divide by negative 2. But in this case, we are dividing by a negative, so we need to switch the order or the direction there. So we get v is uh, less than negative 3. So, and we are looking for uh, an overlap. So if I think about what the graph of this looks like, here's my number line, uh, here's the number six. My first um, condition, my first equation tells me that V is less than six. So that would be something like this. Our second condition says that v is less than negative 3. Well, that would be something like this. 
So we're looking for the overlap. Well, the overlap of those two conditions is just this piece over here. That's where they're overlapped. So our solution, um, our overlapped area is from negative three uh, and to the left. So in this particular topic, they want you to report your answer in interval notation. So we would read that little graph from left to right. So we would say from negative infinity to negative three, and I would use a parenthesis there. And that would be our answer. So this is the exact same equations, just with the word or. So now let's think about what that implies. So v less than 6 or v less than negative 3. So again, if we think about the graph of each of those sort of independently, whoops, I put a negative with my 6, sorry. All right, so v less than 6 is this graph. v less than 3 is this graph. Well, with the word or, we look for an overlap. With the, Sorry, with the word and, we did first, we look for an overlap. With the word or that we're doing now, it's all of it. All those pieces are part of the or answer. So if we look for, you know, all of those pieces, anything that's covered, it would be this, starting at negative six and going this way. Even though there is an open circle here, the other graph filled that open circle. So our solution would be from negative infinity to six. So that's two cases where, um, uh, you know, two types of solutions you might find, but there's several more. Oh, here's my little uh, joke of the day. See if you get that uh, with the rock. It's kind of funny. He looks super funny right there with all that hair. All right, so these two equations are also so the same as each other. We've got one with the word and and one with the word or, and I, I kind of already cleaned them up so that they're ready to go. So remember with and, we're gonna look for the, the overlap. And means it has to fulfill both conditions. With or, we're gonna take all of it because it's the union all together. All right, so if we think about a number line here, our first uh, inequality says that v is greater than five. So that would be this. And our second inequality says that v is less than or equal to negative five. And so that would be this. So if we're looking for an overlap, there is no overlap. There's no part of this graph that fulfills both of those conditions. So that means there is no solution. And the way that you're gonna report no solution is with this symbol that means the empty set. There is no solution. Okay, same uh, inequalities, but with the word or. So we've got that same graph to think about we have the two pieces that we graph independently and then we think about what their union is gonna be. So their union means all of it, all parts. So if I accept all parts of this as my answer, then my answer has two parts and I need to report it with those two parts. So from negative infinity to negative five with a bracket and for the word or the union symbol is used and then from five to infinity. With the infinities, we always use a parenthesis, a parenthesis here because of the open circle, bracket here because of the closed circle. And that would be our solution. So the overlap was an empty set, no solution. And the union is this large interval with two parts. Okay, I've got two more um, different scenarios that can come up. These two, again, look almost the same from each other. One has the word and, one has the word or. So with and, we're gonna look for the overlap of our two conditions. And with or, we're gonna take all of it. 
So our graphs look like, let's see, our first one says that y has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. So this is this. And our second one says y is less than or equal to 2. So that is this. Well, if you think about where those overlap, it would be this middle section right here is where they're overlapped. So from negative 4 to negative 2, close circle on both ends. So we would report our answer as negative 4 to 2. Brackets on both sides of that. Okay, last scenario here. Um, again, this is the same graph as what we just looked at. But this time we are thinking about the union. The union means that we want to take all of it. Everywhere that the graph is drawn is part of our answer. Well, if you think about it, that means the whole entire number line is covered by those two pieces. Um, so in this case, the solution is everything, all real numbers. Or if you did need to write it in interval notation, it would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so switching now to absolute value inequalities. So when you're dealing with absolute value inequalities, there are uh, two uh, different types that can come up. So the first um, situation is that we have a positive number here, um, k greater than zero. If we have uh, an absolute value that is less than a positive number, then we can turn it into this compound inequality to get our solution. So for example, if we knew that the absolute value of x is less than 3, we would translate that into the equation negative 3 less than u less than uh, positive 3, and you can see the graph of that solution below. Our other possibility um, is, you know, with k a positive number, that if the absolute value of u is greater than k, it becomes the or type of inequality. Absolute value k great, absolute value u greater than k means that either u is less than negative k or u is greater than k. So, for example, if we have the absolute value of x greater than 3, we would translate that into the equation x less than negative 3, and that's the first part that you see on the graph, or x is greater than positive 3, and that's the second piece you see on the graph. Um, to apply these two rules, which are on your formula sheet, um, to apply these rules, you may have to do some work to get the absolute value by, your, by itself first. Um, there is one other possibility that we'll talk about in a second, but we'll get to that one in a minute. All right, solve this absolute value inequality, and to report our answer, we are going to actually graph it in Alex. So we've got absolute value uh, x minus 2 is less than 4. This is already um, having that absolute value isolated. So we're ready to apply our rule, which I have in yellow over here on the corner. We've got a positive number here. And so we have an absolute value less than a positive number. That is equivalent to, we're going to negate the 4. We'll put a positive 4 on the other end. And then the stuff inside the absolute value goes in the middle of that x minus 2. So to solve this, um, there's three kind of parts to that inequality. We can absolutely add 2. We're going to have to add 2 to all three parts. So we get negative 2 is less than x is less than 6. So that inequality is our solution. And then we would just graph that to finish up. So open circle here open circle here, and uh, that would be our solution set.
Um, please note if it had had the equality there, then that would have just continued all along and that would have just filled these in for us. So this works both with strict inequalities and um, loose inequalities, I guess we'll call them for now. All right, next one. This time we are going to have to do a little bit to clean up that equation or that inequality first. We're going to subtract 5. So we have 8 times the absolute value of x minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 24. We're going to divide by 8 to get absolute x minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 3. And then you might look at your formula sheet and think to yourself, what is going on here? So this is that third possibility that I hadn't talked about yet. This is an absolute value less than negative 3. An absolute value less than negative 3. Well, that can't happen. An absolute value, uh, by definition, is a positive number. So saying that this positive number is less than negative 3 is a contradiction. And that means that for this equation, there is no solution. So if you have an absolute value less than a negative number, that means there is no solution. All right, we've made it to the last one. So again, we've got a little bit to do. Uh, we need to add four to both sides of this. So we have four X minus two in an absolute value that's greater than or equal to 10. So this is the other type where, you know, we have that positive number here and we have an absolute value greater than that number. So when we translate that it's an or type of inequality so the stuff inside is either less than negative 10 or the stuff inside is greater than positive 10. so one of the equations let's see I'll cover this for a second. One of the equations looks literally almost identical. Oh, I forgot my, sorry, that's my bad. I forgot that. Uh, almost identical, you essentially just drop the absolute values. Uh, the other one, though, the inequality is reversed and you negate it. So I don't know if that will help you remember, but the one does look almost identical, but without the absolute value bars. And this Again, this is part of your formula sheet, so you will have that to refer to. So we've got to solve each of these um, individually. 4x is less than negative 8. We're going to divide by 4 to get x less than negative 2. Or on the other side, we're going to add the 2 as well. That gives us 4x is greater than or equal to, sorry, 12. And then we're going to divide by 4 just like we did before. And this time we get x is greater than or equal to 3. So our solution um, I can't remember if this has you graph it, or I don't think it asks for it in this form. It either asks you to graph it or asks for it in interval notation. Um, if Alex asks you to graph it, your graph would look like x less than negative 2 or x greater than 3. So your graph would have two parts. Or if it asks for it in interval notation, it would be from negative infinity to negative 2 with a bracket union 3 to infinity. 
All right, so let me know if you have any questions. You can email me or ask in class. And that is it for our inequalities lesson. Thanks.